In the first wing of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, close to the Room of the Mummies, one cannot help but be surprised by what you will discover. In a small, inconspicuous display cabinet, an object like no other can be found. Made from a brittle stone known as schist, it is similar in shape to a wheel or discus. This mysterious and to this day unexplained item has become known among particular circles as the tri-lobed disc. It has perplexed all those who have examined it, especially the select Egyptologists that have had the opportunity to study it at great length. Its discoverer is known as one of the most important Egyptologists of the 20th century, author of a classic volume on Egyptology, Archaic Egypt, that continues to be an important bibliographic reference of study even to this day. While carrying out excavations in 1936 within the archaeological zone of Saqqara, Emery discovered the tomb of Prince Sabu. Among several utensils of varying function, the trilobe disc would be found. Emery's attention was immediately drawn to the object, initially defining it in his reports on the first dynasty tombs as, quote, a container in the form of schist bowl. Years later, he again commented on the subject with a word that perfectly summarized the reality of the situation, indicating to the discomfort the object was causing, describing it as a kachibachi, a small hole that threatens to become bigger and bigger. It seems Emery, like many others within the same field, retain their success and notoriety by deliberately and publicly denying such artifacts any traction within the public domain. Denying us all a true understanding of Egyptian history, or at least a questioning of the currently upheld teachings. He finished his quotation by stating that, A satisfactory explanation has not yet been obtained on the particular design of this object, or indeed its construction. The accepted and predictably rigid view regarding the introduction of the wheel into ancient Egypt coincided with the invasion of the Hyksos at the end of the Medium Empire in 1640 BC, this date being over a thousand years after the disc's construction. Egyptologist Cyril Alred reached the conclusion that the object was, without a doubt, a copy of a previously much older metallic object. A detail next to the orifice in the center also made him suspect that this object was only a small part of a more complex mechanism and that it was saved thanks to a stone reproduction for unknown reasons made by an artist with unknown tools. And the fact that it demonstrates such a complex design at such a primitive time in ancient Egyptian history suggests its origins may have been far more unusual than modern tenants would have you believe. It is highly possible that this artifact is a fragment of one's highly advanced technologies, which have subsequently been lost over the millennia. Regardless of hypothesis, its true function, history, or indeed construction, its reason for existence remains a mystery to this day. On December 9, 1957, an incredible event occurred within the UK. Now known as the Silpho Saucer Incident, it has become known within UFO enthusiast circles as the UK's Roswell. It was a story that was first released within the Yorkshire Post. It told of a mystery disc that was found on the Yorkshire Moors. Scarborough businessman Frank Dickinson, along with two friends, were driving through a place known as Reesty Hill, near the village of Silpho, when their car mysteriously stalled as a glowing object appeared in the sky above them, subsequently landing in the Borax Forest. Mr. Dickinson and his friends bravely pursued the downed craft and found a mysterious metallic saucer in a patch of freshly cindered bracken. Amazingly, when the artifact was cut open, apparently a tiny book was found within made of 17 thin copper sheets covered in 2,000 unknown hieroglyphs. Interestingly, similar hieroglyphics were also supposedly found among the wreckage of the UFO that allegedly crashed at Roswell, New Mexico in June 1947. The remains of the Silpho Moore object were subsequently sent to a London laboratory for examination in 1963, including a perplexing fused section of the metal and plastic which was apparently from the outer casing. Gordon Claringbull, a funded academic from the Natural History Museum who specialized in meteorites and explosives, 
said in a memo to the Science Museum that he was prepared to wager anything that the pieces of metal were made on Earth. However, although the scientific community was predictably skeptical, Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding, who led the RAF during the Battle of Britain during World War II, examined the Sylpho saucer in 1958. He actually believed it was genuine. Describing it as a quote, miniature computer piloted flying saucer, Lord Dowding was openly convinced it was a genuine artifact from space, according to the report in the Yorkshire Post. The results of the analysis found that the artifacts contained an unusually pure set of metals, cast in highly specific ways, fueling the UFO community's interest in the object's fragments. Some years later, the artifacts unfortunately vanished. However, they have surprisingly, seemingly turned up within museum archives in Yorkshire. Will more modern specific analysis shed more light on this enigmatic object's origins? We will keep you posted on any future developments. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. An ancient clay tablet buried away in the bowels of a British museum has been quietly baffling historians for over 150 years. This cuneiform tablet has been long housed in the British Museum's archives under collection article number K8538, however, now known as a planisphere, it has nonetheless revealed a fascinating translation telling of an incredible story, one which described of an ancient comet impact with our own planet. Recovered in the 19th century, unearthed from the ancient library of King Azurbanipal in Nineveh, Iraq, by Sir Henry Laird. After feverish research, specialists found that 50% of the clay tablet intricately referred to the position of the planets and weather conditions. Yet in addition, the other half of the tablet described how a massive object, large enough to be observed as it was still in space, was tracked as the inscriber witnessed it approaching and subsequently impacting with Earth. Museum curators explain, the Sumerian astronomer, it would seem, decided the event was of such great importance he made tremendous effort to pinpoint its location in the sky, making an accurate note of the object's trajectory relative to the stars. Incredibly, from this remarkable skill, they claim they were able to pinpoint the precise comet, and it turns out that the object observed by the Sumerian astronomer was the asteroid that impacted Kerfels, Austria. We find this astute research, the possibly successful complete decipherment of the tablet, not to mention its ability to allow us to listen to a witness story of an event thousands of years ago, is indeed incredibly fascinating. There are a surprising number of historical anomalies which scrutinizes the current, often outdated explanations as to the possible origins of human civilization. Anomalies which suddenly bring the age of countless, inexplicable ancient ruins found all over the globe into question. There exist inner circles of historical specialists who have quietly been battling it out over the authenticity of groundbreaking finds made over the ages a smoldering cauldron of unavoidable controversies with frequent yet often failed attempts at discreditation. Ancient discoveries, argued over behind closed doors, often within prestigious institutions, each and all with vested interests on the retention of already established paradigms, illusionary or not, with the Glozel affair being of no exception. Possibly one of the most explosive discoveries which could be unleashed on the historical academic community. A controversial congregation of artifacts of vastly varying dates would be an understatement. Rows of ancient, technologically advanced uparts created by groups originating from all corners of the world, some dating back to the Neolithic, with an array of other periods present all laid undisturbed for untold millennia, a seemingly modern-age historical impossibility. A number of independent investigators continue to entertain the idea that academically funded historians accidentally stumbled upon and subsequently partially exposed to the world 
a perfectly preserved pre-Atlantis antediluvian museum. One so controversial, if the battles over carbon dating be won, by those who support said theory, it would turn our chronological understandings of man upside down. Arguments over the authenticity of the discovery raged on for many decades until the outbreak of the World War in 1939. Multiple lawsuits were launched, five international battles were undertaken, all to either prove or disprove the site's authenticity. Yet, it wasn't until 1974, when a Glenn Daniel, professor of archaeology at Cambridge University, took another, more significant look at the Glozell Affair's artifacts. Although with the clear intention of proving through carbon and other forensic testing that the true ages would ultimately reveal a fakery. Unfortunately, the complete opposite occurred. What was doubly bad for Daniel regarding these peer-reviewed results was that the finds, one luckily buried by the war, had now been plucked from the archives and back into the forefront in the academic field of discussion, yet now with no way of receiving dismissal. In 2019, another examination and scrutinization of the original tests was undertaken, and they held up. So, at a public symposium on archaeometry at Oxford University, details of further work undertaken by McCarroll of Edinburgh and Maydahl, Denmark, claim to show that the age of the ceramics alone is unquestionably great and authentic. This is a site which is undoubtedly incredibly important and one we will definitely be exploring again in the near future. We find the Glozel Affair highly compelling. A number of people who frequent our work have requested a more detailed video regarding one of the mysteries we so often focus upon here on the channel. There are many sites that we feel are deserving of in-depth focus. Our mission has always been to enlighten those who may not have been aware of the many different, compelling, and often controversial realities surrounding countless ancient ruins that throughout their lives have been explained away with a lie. Undoubtedly, the most well-known, most commonly explored, and thus the ruin most suited for our viewers' acquirement of a knowledge armory is Giza. Indeed, there are many people you will meet throughout your life that will have delved into the mysteries of Egypt. However, this experience, unbeknownst to them, may have been fraught with a limited, illogical, academic account regarding the history of Giza's plateau. This video, then, is our gift to our viewer. To prove to all those who act like they know it all how little they actually do. The characteristics of the casing stones are undoubtedly one of our own most noted achievements. We feel little, if any, notice has been given to the facts we have realized regarding these stones. Yet the evidence we have found will remain clear for all to see. These casing stones, although of an enormous size and as such were left by a lost civilization, are far younger than the sandstone in which they encase. Most of these casing stones, unfortunately robbed out during invasions within the last few centuries, are protecting stones which are actually far more eroded and thus far older beneath. However, additionally, we began to wonder just how old could the Great Pyramids be? Could these eroding sandstones actually be concealing a far larger, far older structure beneath? Also discovered here on our channel, the supporting evidence to this hypothesis, most notably along the east side of Khufu and in numerous other places where the smaller sandstones have been robbed out, is, as we suspected, a far larger exoskeleton. We strongly believe these enormous megalithic blocks that we have previously estimated to be many hundreds of tons in weight are actually the original oldest blocks of the pyramids. We also believe that the more modern, currently recognized casing stones were actually inspired by these more heavily eroded smaller sandstone blocks, now concealing these mammoth megaliths. This makes the layers we believe that adorn the Great Pyramid numbers three, with the two more modern layers being conservation efforts, undoubtedly undertaken at vastly different times within history. 
Just how old is the Great Pyramid? Just how impressive was ancient Egypt? For example, the oldest surviving obelisk at Heliopolis, and therefore in Egypt, was undeniably cut, transported, and lifted into position at an unknown time in history, using now lost technology and knowledge. It is a stone 20 meters in height, weighing an astonishing 121 tons. And this enormous, unexplainable, impossible monolith is not the only one left upon the plateau. There are many more dotted all over Giza. For example, the sarcophagus of Amenemet III, a pair of quartzite monoliths, discovered in the early 20th century hang above this supposed tomb. These gigantic stones effortlessly support the weight above, each estimated to weigh 110 metric tons. The Colossi of Memnon, these two gigantic artworks were built from single pieces of stone. They are orientated toward the sunrise at winter solstice, estimated to weigh anywhere from 600 to 1,000 tons each. Modern technology allows for the movement of such weights. However, any civilization claimed by academia, actually once being responsible for the transportation of such stones, is absurd. Who could have possibly transported such enormous stones to these locations? Not only transported them, but worked them into masterpieces they once were, disposing of all waste, presumably also weighing many tons. And there are many others. In the temple east of Khafre's Pyramid, for example, there lay blocks regularly, yet quietly estimated to weigh over 400 tons. How can modern academia claim such tasks were undertaken by our modern ancestors. Anyone aware of the true accomplishments involved in the construction of the Giza Plateau must now see this hypothesis as severely lacking any satisfactory explanations. Mortuary Temple of Menkaura still possesses some astonishing unexplained feats. There are some estimates of the blocks within the temple, most notably within the surviving walls of the mortuary, weighing as much as 220 tons. The heaviest granite ashlars, imported from Aswan Quarry many miles away, weighing in at more than 30 tons. There are many incredible, inexplicable features upon the Giza Plateau. Many of them, unfortunately, yet predictably, little shared academically. Yet it remains a place of invaluable existent truths, many discrediting that which are passed off as current academic fact. Giza is an astonishing place, and the one we feel most likely to expose academia once and for all. It is a plateau we find highly compelling.